This is Jessica. I'm from the Department of Mathematics and Statistics. So I will talk about the OER course development for Math 3322. This is a degree map for most STEM students. For students majoring in any of STEM majors in their year one, they will take 144, 147, those are college algebra and their trigonometry. Uh, they are prerequisite courses for uh, calculus one, calculus two. So in year two, they will start um, taking the calculus two and calculus one. So calculus one is 117 and calculus two is 175. So meanwhile, some programs also require students to take linear algebra 2020, 20, 40 in their year one. So after that, in year three and year two, they will take their major courses depending on what major they are in. So for example, the electrical computer engineering students will start taking some 300 level, 200 level courses in their major. And science students can take 300 to 400 level courses. Students majoring in mathematics, that is the time they will take elementary analysis, the 3326. So basically the 3326 will be the first for most students, that will be the first proof-based math courses. By saying proof-based, that's different from um, calculus one, calculus two, or linear algebra. Um, for general, for most of the math courses, students need to do computations, solving problems, things like that. However, in 3326, in elementary analysis, the only thing they need to do is to prove things. So be able to read the proof or write the proof and finally evaluate other proof. Okay, that is where or when the student will take the 3326. So let's see who are in the 2336. Okay, so basically the 3326 and 4423, that is a sequence of causes. In other words, 3326 and 4426, they are using exactly the same book. However, the 33 26 will cover the first part of the book, and 4423 will cover the next part of the book. So the cost material can be adopted in both 3326 and 4423. Both courses are required for students majoring. 3326 is required for students majoring in math, applied math, and statistics. Uh, and 3326 is optional for students minoring math, but right now it's still required for students minoring in applied math and statistics. According to my experience, I have taught 3326 and 4423 about two years. So you are the fourth master in 3326 and the teach 4423 in the spring semester, something like that. More than half of students in the class of 3322, they are minoring in applied math or statistics. Uh, so they could be a student majoring in physics or computer science, or maybe uh, electro electrical engineering, but still minoring statistics or applied math. And then they are taking the 3326. The enrollment varies. Uh, it could be six or seven students, or it could be about 20 students. Oops. All right. The material cost for a uh, mass 3326 is usually above $30. Uh, that's the book. Uh, th that's the book uh, which has been used in the 3326 in the past. That's the only cost students need to pay because as upper division courses, the instructors is grading all the homework. So the only thing that students need to pay for is their test book. Okay. And when I taught the math 3326, I tried to incorporate the OER, OER material, the basic analysis, introduction to real analysis, written by label. This is the open resource book. So when I taught math 3326 for the first time, I used the OER book as a reference book. And I used this one as the test book, and this one is a reference book. The reason is that in this book, there are lots of examples and lots of explanations. However, in the OER book, it seems like everything is simplified. That's why I'm using the OER book as a reference book. When I taught the 3326 the first time, it's probably three years ago. And now, uh, upon receiving the grant, I started to develop the OER courses, which 
integrated the material from the OER book. And also I included some examples, we find some examples in this book, so that the OER book I developed, developed has the content is consistent with all the books because basically the content of the uh, real analysis is very standard. Okay? Uh, however, I included the graphs and homework problems. I included the homework problem in this OER book and I learned examples from this book and modified it to make this OER material for this course. It uh, includes the lecture notes, homework and homework solutions, exam and exam solutions. Uh, so all of them, oh, I just, okay, we can take a look at this one. Okay, so basically we have the elementary analysis. So it's all of the materials they are here. So there's exams, okay, all the exams, final exams, homework, the homework solutions are, because this one is for student, so that's like the content here is for student only. That's why there's no homework solutions. And uh, it is editable, it is shareable. So I can sh share this link so that any student can log into it without any, they do not need to download anything. If I usually share the link on Moodle and this one, I usually share the link on Moodle and as student click this link, it will take student to this page and then they can navigate between all of the materials. So they can just find out everything they need. There's a lecture notes, there's a homework, that's those exams, just the review materials, practice or of exams. So that's open for all the, those are just the resources for all the students. Okay, so basically this platform is called Overleaf. And what I can do is you really how it works is, for example, I have, let's take a look at homework. So here they have in the homework, there are some uh, spaces reserved for students to answer the questions. Uh, they can do it in two ways. One way is if they download it, so they will have a PDF file downloaded and then they can print out and write down their solutions um, here in the space provided. That's one way they can go. And the other way they can go is if they want to learn the latex some like basic codings is happening on the left. So what they can do is they can just copy and paste this latex and create a overleaf. For example, they can create another overleaf. Um, so I already have one. So I basically probably I should do this. Okay. So they can go to the overleaf project and then uh, create their own create their account and then copy the code there and then for example here then they can type their answers so that's a space that space reserved for them and they can type their answers improve whatever they can type and type, type out their answers by themselves and then if you click recompile so the solution will be generated as a pdl file there are two ways to go so this is set of material which is shareable which is which can be shared with students and i also have another one which is for instructors Hopefully i have this one let me see the elementary analysis for students and here the elementary analysis this one is for instructors anyone uh, who are teaching many uh, elementary analysis the mass 30 through 26, um, I can share this with them. So basically from here, you see those are the exams and solution key. The exam solution key, depending on this is a in-person or maybe sometimes this is, sometimes some instructors prefer a in-person um, written exam, but uh, sometimes they also prefer to use the take home because the proof usually is really hard. It's, it's because due to the time and the pressure and the anxiety, all kinds of things, it is really hard for students to, to prove something within 50 minutes. So sometimes instructors use both the in-class exam and the take home exam. So all are here. For the homework, they have the, here is the homework, and here is the homework solution. So everything is typed out. 
and editable. So if an uh, instructor want to change something, make some changes, get rid of some problems, or just replace it with new problem, they can just go ahead to edit this uh, LaTeX code, then, then save it, then they will be able to have a new version. Okay, all right. And uh, the course material, in particular, the uh, content of the lecture slides, I can click anyone as an example. It is, it is Zoom friendly. In other words, I just, when I'm generating those resources, I just did it in this way. So we have some basic definitions and then examples following each definition or theory in this example. And there is a space for the uh, for the students to interact. So if it's an in-person class, each one each student can have a printed handout, like printed lecture notes. Then they can write down their solutions here, and uh, then they can communicate. If it's online via Zoom, if there is any Zoom attendance, they can also interact via the Zoom chat by typing true or false, and uh, they can also do the annotation for Zoom attendance if we have the smart board available in a classroom. So basically, and this, the homework, especially the lecture notes, they are set up so that they can be used in for in-person uh, sections, Zoom sections, or maybe fully online sections. Okay. Finally, I just want to share some feedback from students. Uh, this is a feedback I received in the last semester. So this is the most recent feedback from the cost evaluation uh, because I'm using the cost material for both 3326 and 4423. That's why I just, I think the first two, they are from the 4423 and the last one is from 3326. So here it says that Overleaf and Google Classroom resources are effective. Overleaf is the one we just shared. So Overleaf is this one. That's an overleaf platform. So for the set of material, I shared the whole thing, everything. I shared everything with students. So they will know at the beginning of class, they know how many homework they need to complete. And they know how long the how, how long the exam one will be and what's the exam one, exam two, final exam gonna look like at the very beginning of the class. And they have available the lecture size available to them and they can just like print out or maybe click the link and for a quick overview or review at any time they need it. So that's Overleaf platform. And here the Google Classroom is another thing. I use. Google Classroom is free. So good because I my class size is pretty small. Three students in person, two students online for the math 3326 last semester. Uh, so for such small class size, uh, the Google Classroom is free for everyone. So there's no extra cost. Uh, the, in the Google Classroom, they can upload their solutions. Um, uh, they can upload their homework in, uh, to the uh, Google Classroom. Uh, so I will be able to keep all of the copies of their submissions in one place, okay? Uh, so in, in, in this way, anytime they need a review or they need to recall some mistakes they made or they need to recall some proof they have done, they can just uh, log into the Google Classroom and find out the uh, the, the homework they up uploaded and just learn from the mistakes or just give them a refreshment of everything they have done uh, before. Maybe because the semester is pretty long, right? They may forget when they uh, something covered at the beginning of the semester. So that's why I'm using the Google Classroom for homework collections and the revisions and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so by seeing the explanations walk through proofs, I think this one is related to, to the design of the uh, lectures. So I just click another one to show you how it looks. So here, I just designed the cost material in this way, such that they are to prove something. I just started with proof discussion, this brainstorming part, and then and then formal proof following by that. So basically in class, we will do the brainstorming part all together to try to find out strategies, approaches to get this problem solved. 
And then just like students can try to work together. Sometimes they write on their solutions on the board and so on and so forth. And then finally, I will show standard answer, but the, there's no unique solution to, to, to a proof problem, right? This is pretty open. So because this writing it can be presented in a variety of ways, but I will, pre I will present this way of uh, writing uh, to them and I will compare this one with what they have done. So from here by this kind of like reading the proof and then evaluating their proofs, so they will learn. Um, so something like that. So we have the definition and uh, after definition there are, there are spaces. So those spaces, like here, those spaces just for them to come up with examples. And so here, this is a cost material. And when I was going through the cost material in class, I will do the annotation. I've used my Apple Pen to write down something in the lecture notes. I will add examples maybe circle something and so on and so forth. A students on Zoom can also annotate on that. Uh, so after class, I will save this annotated lecture notes and also share that one on Moodle with all the students. So this is the kind of uh, pre-written lecture notes. And also they have a, another version of the lecture notes with all of the annotations and uh, examples and all the details, all the writings we have that we have worked on in class. They said that the homework problems and, and the problem in the exam, they are aligned with the material because it's designed in this way. Here in the lecture notes of um, section I, there are examples, so the examples and proofs and so on and so forth. We will discuss all of them in class. And in the homework, they will they, they are asked to solve a similar type of problem. A little bit different, but similar. By saying similar, I mean that the problem in the homework can be proved by applying the same strategy. Okay, so definitely the notation will be changed and uh, some of the statement may be modified, but the basic strategy is the same. So that's why they are saying that the homework problems, exam problem, and the examples in lecture notes, they are aligned because when I developed all of them, I just make sure that they are consistent. So there's basically there's no big surprise when they are working on homework problems or exam problems. Okay. All right, that's the uh, basic things. That's all I have done. If you have any questions, you can feel free to uh, reach out to me. And uh, all of the material I developed is public, is open. So anyone else in the math department who will teach the math 3326 or 4423 again, I'm more than happy to share the overleaf material with them one for the student and the one for instructor. And they can feel free to do any addition. You can, they can feel free to edit it, modify it, change it, delete it. Or maybe this kind of cost material can be used as a supplementary document, if that's gonna be better. That's my presentation, thank you.